if we have some variations or some SNPs in our genetics that can impact how much these heavy metals are impacting our health. Hey everybody, welcome to the Doctor's Pharmacy. I'm Dr. Mark Hyman, and that's pharmacy with an F, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, a place for conversations that matter. And if you've ever felt heavy, this is a conversation you should listen to. And I'm not talking about heavy sad, I'm talking about heavy metals, which are a rampant problem, far underdiagnosed, underappreciated, um, pretty much almost ignored by traditional medicine, and yet is driving so many of our health crises. And today I'm so happy to be sharing the story of mercury with you, uh, and it's a very personal story for me, with my colleague and medical director on this very special episode of The Doctor's Pharmacy called House Call. And I'm gonna sit down with so many of my colleagues at the Ultra Wellness Center in Lenox, Massachusetts, uh, and, and Liz is just my number one doc. She's the medical director of the Ultra Wellness Center. She teaches all over the world. She's on the faculty of the Institute for Functional Medicine. She's one of the best doctors I know. And we are gonna talk about mercury. So welcome, Liz. Thanks, Mark. It's great to be with you today. So let's start with talking about why do you think this is just so ignored? Because mercury is such a prevalent problem. And when we test people at the Ultra Wellness Center, we find so many people have not only high blood levels of mercury, but high total body levels. Uh, in fact, we did a, a survey of the 10,000 tests that we'd done at some point in time. And we looked at the number of people who had toxicity and it was 40% of the people who came to the Ultra Wellness Center had high levels of mercury that interfere with their biology. So why do you think this is just so ignored and, and, and what do we have to do to properly discover whether mercury is an issue for somebody or not? I mean, it's a, it's a great question, Mark. You know, um, even the World Health Organization recognizes that mercury is one of the top 10 chemicals of major public health concern. But I, I think that toxins in general in conventional medicine are often overlooked and ignored. And because we, we always are thinking about acute toxicity in conventional medicine, and so often we're not thinking about the chronic lower levels of toxicity that can have huge health effects as well. And so I think the other reason that sometimes it's ignored is we're not always doing, per well, we're often not doing personalized medicine in convention, well, how we were trained conventionally, where heavy metals as with any toxin impact different people differently depending on their toxic load, all of the other toxins they have exposure to, um, how their body detoxifies, how their digestive system is working, how old they are, right? We know that younger kids are impacted more than old, you know, some older people. So, you know, there's so many things impact how we're, how we're impacted by these heavy metals, our genetics, you know, our microbiome. And so I think that sometimes uh, we look at the whole population and say, oh, our mercury levels are coming down in the environment or we're working to have them come down um, and but but not take that individual person, which can yeah. be really impacted by this. Well, you know, it, it, it is one of the most important drivers of chronic disease. And it's also one of the most ignored. And I, I unfortunately had a very personal experience with this because I lived in China and was exposed to huge amounts of the pollution they burned coal, raw coal for 10 million people in the city. The air was black and an air filter. I would clean it out all the time and sucking in all this concentrated mercury. And when I got back to the States, um, the mercury caught up with me and it ended up causing total collapse of my system. So I got chronic fatigue syndrome. I developed autoimmune disease. My gut stopped working. I had diarrhea for years and years. I had severe cognitive dysfunction. I couldn't focus. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't remember anything. It was like I had dementia, ADD, and depression all at once. And I also developed severe muscle injury. My muscles were being eaten up and damaged. The mitochondria were being damaged. I developed rashes and sores. My immune system completely screwed up. My hormones screwed up. My thyroid, my adrenal. So everything screwed up because of the mercury. And I tend to have a really high level. And, and I went to doctor after doctor after doctor, and no one could help me. I went to Harvard. I went to Columbia. <laughs> you know, all the top, top doctors, and no one really could figure out what was going on until I met a naturopath in Maui, actually, over 23 years ago, who said, you know, maybe we should test you for 
things. And he said, but maybe you have heavy metals. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And I tested it and I had the, one of the highest levels I've seen. You know, Liz and I test people all the time and my level was 187, which is, you know, really high. Uh, and, wow. and, you know, anything over 20 is bad on a challenge test. So I know personally how bad mercury can be. And I can tell you over practicing functional medicine for almost 30 years, it, it is one of those incredible things that if you find it and it's the cause of a person's disease and you treat it, and we'll talk about how to treat it in a minute, it literally can transform their lives. So I went from being someone who was probably going to be on disability my entire life with chronic fatigue syndrome to being super healthy and fit at 61 and going strong. So I think, I think it's important to understand that if you have some weird ailment and you're not getting better and you've tried everything, it's important to look for heavy metals. Yeah, I mean, they, they say, I mean, we know that heavy metals, mercury can impact the nervous system, the digestive system, the um, uh, uh, our uh, development, definitely our development. So kids, as I said earlier, are impacted more uh, because they're young and small humans. So they get impacted by the, the toxic load in the environment. So that, that can really impact their development. It can result in... Um, memory issues for young and old, how we learn and understand our coordination. It can impact the immune system. It's associated with autoimmune diseases and immunosuppression, mood issues, sleep issues, right? Memory issues, uh, uh, changes in our kidney function and other function in the body. And like you mentioned, we often see, see it snowball like that, right? Where, where, where you just, the body just sort of snowballs and gets worse and worse with multiple different things going on. Yeah, it's so true. And you know, I think we, we know that mercury is the second uh, most dangerous toxin on the planet after plutonium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's prevalent in our food and fish, in our mouth and fillings. It's prevalent often in medication, thimerosal, which is a preservative. Yeah. Uh, it comes from coal emissions in power plants. So if you live near a cement plant or a coal plant, you're going to get the pollution of mercury. It, it's really prevalent and it's a potent neurotoxin. It's, it's the most potent neurotoxin out there. It's an immunotoxin, meaning it can cause autoimmune diseases and all kinds of other issues. And, it, and, it, and like you said, it creates this cascade of problems that seem often vague, you know, like developmental issues in kids, or even autism. And that's yeah. not to say all autism is caused by mercury because autism, there is no such thing as autism. There are autisms and every kid with autism is a little bit different, has different causes and treatments. But I've definitely seen heavy metals be a factor. <clears throat> and I think, you know, even even weight metabolism, uh, people think that, you yeah. know, your your you know how could mercury mitochondria like you're mentioning right yeah so we know that there, there's a real link between environmental toxins and obesity we call these obesogens and heavy metals are certainly one i remember a, a very young fitness trainer who was like 40 pounds overweight and no matter what she ate or what she did she would not lose the weight and we found out she had really high levels of mercury we chelated her detoxified her and we'll talk about how to do that in a minute uh, and we found that she was able to dro really drop the weight very quickly. Um, <clears throat> what's even more frightening, you know, and I think this was sort of, um, I don't know if I can get the exact stat. Maybe, you maybe remember it, but um, they're, they're, they, looked, they measured the blood levels of mercury in pregnant women. This was in JAMA a number of years ago. Wow. And they found that I think it was like one in eight births um, <clears throat> were from women who had toxic levels of mercury in their blood, which was going to the fetus. Right. I know. I was just looking at the EPA website mm -hmm. and they were they mentioned on EPA.gov, they said that more than 75,000 newborns in the U.S. each year are estimated to have potential for developmental delays and learning disabilities because of mercury. And where, where are they getting it? Right. And that's that's that's, you know, that's a conservative estimate. Right. That's a conservative estimate. Yeah, I think it's more than Probably that. Probably more yeah. than that, but that's a lot. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, they, when you're a fetus, you're getting it through the placenta, you know, through through um, from the mother. So the mother eats eats high mercury fish or they have exposure through the environment or even their mercury amalgams. Right. And then that can get into the um, the developing fetus through the placenta. Um, unfortunately, also, you know, when we're breastfeeding, we can share toxins with our newborn. 
unfortunately, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be breastfeeding, but you know, uh, that, that does impact the, uh, the, the baby. Yeah. So I think, I think that that's right. And the data I think was from JAMOS from 2003, that 8% of women had concentrations higher than the EPA's protection recommended amount, which is wow. 5.8, which is still too high. Right. Right. Great. And, and so zero is the normal level. Like what's the normal level of mercury in your blood? Zero. Right. Zero. And there is a normal blood sugar. There's normal cholesterol, but there is no normal level of mercury. So when it says zero to 10 on the lab and 10 is normal, that is just nonsense because there's an increasing risk with increasing exposures. And, and where is it coming from that we see so much mercury? Where, where are the main sources and how do people reduce their exposures? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest source <clears throat> is coal, coal burning facilities. So, um, and, and mercury is emitted during that coal burning process. It goes into the air and then it gets, then that goes into our water supply. And um, then the, the mercury then settles at the bottom of our lakes and rivers and oceans and bacteria then consume it and produce this methyl mercury, which is a really toxic form of mercury uh, for people. And then it bioaccumulates in the fish. So, you know, little fish might have a little bit of, of mercury, but then the, the bigger fish eat the littler fish and then the bigger, bigger fish eat the medium sized fish. Right. And so the bigger the fish is, the more mercury accumulates, it bioaccumulates into the fish. And so uh, that's why the recommendation is to stick with the smaller fish um, when you're eating fish. And so, you know, the, the, um, the, the larger the fish, the shark, the tuna, the king mackerel, you know, you're going to get way more um, mercury when you eat those larger fish. And so you want to be avoiding those large fish. I think that's right. And I think the major source is fish uh, consumption. However, uh, the FDA, after decades and decades of evidence <laughs> showing the dangers of mercury fillings, we call them silver fillings, but they're not silver. They're actually mostly mercury has ruled that children and pregnant women should not be having mercury fillings. <laughs> now, in most other countries in Europe and in Canada, they basically already done that for years and years and years. But finally, the FDA this year put out a, a statement that we should not be putting mercury fillings in kids or in pregnant women. And, and, and conversely, even if you have them, they're not saying taking them out, but if you have them, they do off gas, they do vaporize and you do absorb the inorganic mercury. And we actually can test for this and we can tell whether you have mercury from fish or mercury from fillings. So it's really important to understand that, that it's, it's, it's not a benign thing to have mercury fillings. And it's a little scary for people because they're like, what do I do? I got a mouthful of fillings. You don't want to just go rip them out because you can get worse. In fact, I had a, a friend who was a doctor who was just, he should have known better, but he went and had all his mercury take it out of his mouth and he didn't do it safely. It ended up causing a massive flood of mercury in his system caused heart failure. And we, right. we know that, you know, heart failure can be linked to mercury. In fact, one study I read years ago, looking at what we call idiopathic heart failure, means we don't know the cause. When they did muscle biopsies, they found there were like 22,000 times the level of mercury <laughs> in the muscle compared to people who didn't have heart failure when they did a biopsy and wow. also arsenic and lead and other things. And I've had patients with heart failure who I've literally chelated and treated who reversed their heart failure, improved their ejection fraction, which is a measure of how much heart blood your heart can pump out by simply removing the metals. So, okay, so, so we, so I was just gonna say, like you said, in, in this past September, the FDA came out with this recommendation to not use these silver fillings or silver amalgams, which contain 40 to 50% mercury in them, which is, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, that's a, that's a lot. And they still do. People come to me every day and they're like, do they still have mercury in those silver fillings? I'm like, they still do, you know, there's, and they're still using them because they're cheap. They, and they're very strong. They last a long time, but they said, the FDA said not for women, women who, who are at childbearing age, who want to become pregnant, who are planning to become pregnant, who are nursing, children less than six, but also for people who have any neurological conditions or kidney function issues. So in reality, really, who who should we be used for, right? No, right. Yeah. Um, 
And I remember I, I was Well, that's so right. I mean, if, if it's not safe for pregnant women and children, why is it OK for the rest of us? <laughs> exactly. I remember this, you know, I told this story before, but um, I remember, you know, when I first started working with you and you would look at my mouth and I was full of horrible <laughs> amalgams and you would be like, Liz, you got to get those out. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, really? You think so? Are you yeah, sure? Yeah, yeah. And then I did that test that, that, that can uh, delineate and say, is this mercury coming from eating too much high mercury fish or is it coming from these amalgams? And the test showed that I was still, that those amalgams were still emitting enough mercury vapor that that was then getting out in my system. And so it was showing up in the test and then it sort of convinced me, okay, Mm -hmm. not that I didn't believe you. I was, I was listening to you, Mark. No, no, it's okay. I mean, who wants to go to the dentist? It's not like, oh, let's go to the dentist. I know. And and so, but you're right. It has to be done safely, right? You want to have it. You want to work with a dentist who who knows what they're doing, who uses a, a dam in your mouth so it doesn't get into your into your mouth, puts puts you on oxygen. You know, really has high a, speed a, suction. A of, yes. So that so that it's safe for you and safe for the dentist too, right? And um, mm-hmm. and they should be wearing a gas mask too. Yeah. And, you know, we also and we'll talk about this with our cases. It's really important that you're in a you're in a healthy place if you are thinking about getting them removed. Not only do you want to work with somebody who knows how to do it safely, but you you want your body to be to be healthy, to, you know, to be having, you know, your digestive system working well, to be having good bowel movements, to be sweating regularly, to be you know, eating a really good, healthy diet, because, you know, even though they do it as safely as possible, you know, this is a major procedure and you want to make sure the body can handle that removal and replacement with some composite filling. Yeah. Hey, everybody, it's Dr. Hyman. Thanks for tuning into The Doctor's Pharmacy. I hope you're loving this podcast. It's one of my favorite things to do and introducing you all the experts that I know and I love and that I've learned so much from. And I want to tell you about something else I'm doing, which is called Mark's Picks. It's my weekly newsletter. And in it, I share my favorite stuff from foods to supplements to gadgets to tools to enhance your health. It's all the cool stuff that I use and that my team uses to optimize and enhance our health. And I'd love you to sign up for the weekly newsletter. I'll only send it to you once a week on Fridays. Nothing else, I promise. And all you have to do is go to drhyman.com forward slash picks to sign up. That's drhyman.com forward slash picks, P-I-C-K-S, and sign up for the newsletter and I'll share with you my favorite stuff that I use to enhance my health and get healthier and better and live younger, longer. Now back to this week's episode. So let, let's talk about in a minute the the ways in which we treat people that it's different. And before we get into that, and we're going to go through some cases, I want to talk about how we identify the problem. Because you know, often <laughs> I, read, I read this one paper on mercury that was hysterical to me because it was like, it was like, well, we measured the blood level because that's the easiest place to test the mercury. It reminds me of the joke of the guy who was looking for his keys under the lamppost and ended up uh, being asked by his friend, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm looking for my keys. Says, Where'd you drop them? I said, well, I dropped them down the road. He said, why are you looking over here? He says, well, the light's better here. Meaning we, we're used to doing tests for things that we can test, not necessarily where the problem is. And right. so let's talk about how we diagnose someone. When someone comes in with autoimmune issues, neurologic issues, developmental issues, digestive, whatever, chronic fatigue issues, we really check almost everybody. For me, it's almost like getting a blood pressure on a person. It's a basic test to see if there, if we want to screen people uh, for heavy metals, what, what's really going on. So, so how do we begin to think about testing and what are the sort of different types of tests, blood, urine, uh, and so forth, hair that we can look at and what do they each mean and how do we, how do we come up with a coherent assessment of someone's total body burden of heavy metals and mercury? I mean, I always start with a good history. I mean, I think that's important to, you know, get a sense of somebody's uh, in environmental history. What's their toxic exposure over the lifetime? How much high mercury fish are they eating? How much did they eat in the past? Um, you know, do they do they love tuna and they have you know t- like sushi from the t- tuna or or um, how many silver fillings do they have in their mouth? Um, how old are they? When were those silver fillings placed? Because that you know they do uh, over years and years they they re- they emit less mercury so. You know, and then of course you want to know what's what is their health issues. What are they what are they dealing with? It's really important to take a really good, careful, detailed history, and then it helps us determine 
if if evaluation for mercury makes sense to do. So then we look at, you know, you can look at blood levels, but like you mentioned, sometimes blood levels don't give us all of the information. Um, and so we'll often do the uh, Quicksilver tri test, which is a great test that we had talked about before that looks at blood, urine, and hair. And it tells us about methylmercury and inorganic mercury. The inorganic more likely coming from your silver amalgams. And that can help us determine, you know, should these amalgams be safely replaced when that person's body is ready to have that process done. So that's a test I like, and it really helps me. Uh, get a sense. We can yeah. also. Look so wait, before you before you go on, yeah. on, on to the next test, the blood test is important to understand because if if you have a blood test, this is what your doctor will typically do. So I think I have mercury issues. Well, let me check your blood. So they check the blood, and it's zero. But you've been eating tuna when you were in college three times a day for ten years. Then you stopped. Well, if if you've eaten no fish over the last ninety days, or one hundred twenty days your blood levels are going to be pretty negligible or zero, but you could have accumulated huge amounts of mercury. The other thing is with silver fillings or amalgam fillings, mercury fillings, you might not have a very high blood level because it's in smaller doses, but it's extremely toxic. And so you often will miss it. So, so just because your blood level is normal does not mean you do not have a problem with mercury. And that's why we look at, for example, the QS tri test where we measure urine, hair, and blood, your detoxification of the metals, as well as whether it's coming from fish or fillings or pollution. But the most important test is the one you're about to tell us about, which really tells us, and it's the best approximation we have now, I don't think it's a perfect test, of what our total body load is and, and how much we've accumulated over our lifetime. So what is that test? And tell us about the pros and cons and the challenges and the controversies about it. Absolutely. So, you know, what, what you're speaking about is the urine toxic metal test, which is a provoked heavy metal challenge test where we collect somebody's urine first thing in the morning and then we give them a chelator. Now, we are typically using DMSA. There are other chelators you can use for this test. But in our, at our practice, we, we often use oral DMSA. And then they take the chelator, which is binds to the heavy metals in the body. And then we collect urine, their urine for like six hours. And, um, and then we get a sense of past exposure. There, there is a lot of controversy about this test. And, you know, it is something that I talk to every patient about if we're even thinking about doing the test because they have to understand the pros and cons, as you mentioned. Um, and there's no really standard norm for what a um, what your provoked challenge should be. And one of the reasons for that is that a lot of different clinicians do it differently. So, you know, one clinician may use a different chelator or they might do it IV or they might do it for a different amount of time or a different dose. And so that's one reason that, you, you know, you have to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. And so the, the companies often don't give you a reference range for what is normal. So nobody's come up with what is what is normal. And, well, and no, normal is zero, Liz. I mean, normal is zero. There, we, we should not have mercury in our bodies. We should not have lead or arsenic or cadmium. The level is zero. So the question is what above zero is a problem? And, right. and I've seen people, for example, have had very high levels, but their bodies seem to adjust, accommodate to it. And I personally had mercury for years without being sick. So I had like two or three years when I came back from China, maybe probably two years, where I was okay. But then yeah. something happened, it tipped me over and everything just fell apart. So I, I think, you know, you, you can't really just um, assume that, that any level is good. And you have to assume that if people are sick, that it's really worth getting it out. Or if people are at risk for diseases, or if you're at risk for autoimmune disease, you're at risk for diabetes, you're at risk for dementia, then it's yeah. really important proactively to address heavy metals. And it's, and it's, it's, it's important. You know, that that test and some other tests that we can talk about help us sort of stratify what what group somebody is in. Right. Like, are they in a group where we just need to work on general, good, healthy detoxification, eating a good, healthy diet that's rich in phytonutrients, making sure you're eating a lot of fiber just to help the body detoxify. <clears throat> right? Or maybe maybe this person needs to be a little more aggressive. Or, or maybe they need to be doing a chelation type protocol. So it's really important to, to we look at all the different tests. We also look at their genetics and how they produce glutathione, how they detoxify. We can look at markers like oxidative stress that can give us a sense of how much these heavy metals have 
caused illness in their body. Um, and of course, we look at their symptoms. And with autoimmunity, we can also look at antibodies against heavy metals or toxins. And, and that can, if, you know, that can sometimes give us a sense of are those heavy metals creating or, or maybe part of the trigger for an autoimmune process going on in that person's body. So there's a lot of things we look at when we're sort of when we're working to stratify how aggressive our treatment approach needs to be. Yeah. And, and the important thing is people realize is that, you know, if you do have heavy metals, you cannot just go in and start ripping out your fillings or start chelating or doing other things. You have to really get ready for it because it's a big strain on the body. And if you don't do it right, you can make people sick. And, and you know, we learned years ago in functional medicine that we need to follow a couple of steps. One, we need to mobilize the metals, which often is using chelators, whether they're natural chelators or medication chelators like DMSA, which pull the metal out of the cells and storage tissues. Then we need to increase circulation and transport to the liver and kidneys. So lots of fluids, exercise, lymphatic circulation, all really, really important. And then we need to upregulate all the pathways in the liver that start to mobilize the mercury, which involves boosting glutathione. And we're going to talk about how to do that, which is almost like the sticky flypaper that the metals bind to, and then you get rid of it. And then we need to get, make sure it's getting out of the body. So you need to poop and pee and sweat. Saunas are very helpful. And there's a whole science to doing this uh, correctly, which uh, is important because if you do it incorrectly, you can really cause trouble. So um, let's talk about uh, some cases because I think, you know, they'll be really illustrative. I can share my case a little bit, but I think I'd love to hear, uh, you know, from you uh, about that 40 year old woman who's always getting sick and always getting infections and always got sick after she traveled. So what, what, what clued you into that she might have metals and what did you find and what did you do? Right. So, so like you said, she was in her forties and she came to see me about three years ago and she picked up every virus that was going around every stomach infection, every cold her kids brought home. You know, she was always getting sick. She was that way when she was a kid too. You know, she got lots of ear infections. She was on lots of antibiotics. She got strep throat all the time. Um, and, and she came in frustrated with the fact that she was always getting sick. And she, she did, when we did a full history and I did a physical exam, I saw that she had multiple silver fillings in her mouth. She had had lots of cavities as a kid. Um, they were quickly filled with, with silver amalgams. I think she had 12 silver amalgams in her mouth uh, that were placed when she was a kid. And so she was also wondering, were, you know, were these something she should have replaced? And, um, and, and so, and, and I was too, you know, I was wondering how much those amalgams were impacting her immune system, because as we talked about heavy metals and, and mercury definitely can stress out the immune system, that they can make the immune system not work as well. And they can also make the immune system make mistakes and fight itself like an autoimmune condition. So they're, they're tied in with both ends of the immune system, not working yes. as it should. Yeah, and it can yeah. increase allergies and so forth, right? Absolutely, right, right, like reacting to everything. Um, absolutely. So, you know, I mean, when I when I was sick, I, I had basically had turkey, broccoli, and brown rice for like six months because I'd eat every, anything, and my tongue would swell up, my eyes would get all swollen, I'd get raccoon eyes, and my skin would get rashes. I mean, it was it was horrible. You're reacting to everything. Everything. Now I can yeah. eat anything. It's like. I repaired my system. So that's the beauty of this is that when you use the science of functional medicine, which we do at the Ultra Wellness Center, which we really um, filter everything through the lens of functional medicine, we're able to help people where no one else can be helped. And I, I, I'm a perfect example of that. I, my life would have been totally different if I hadn't discovered functional medicine, if I hadn't found out I had mercury, if I hadn't learned about how to detoxify from it and, and learn how to use this in all my patients. So, so, so basically you found this woman, she had a high organic, inorganic mercury from her fillings. Uh, and so tell us what you did to help her heal and boost yeah. her immune function. Yeah, so she also had a lot of digestive issues, you know, um, acne, you know, a lot of bloating after she ate. I mean, she was on lots of antibiotics as a kid. So she, had a, she, you know, she had a bunch of different things going on. We did do that, that test that looked at, could this mercury be coming from her, her fish or the air or how much was coming from her amalgams? And it definitely showed that there was some concern about the amalgams, the silver fillings. And so we... We wanted to help her get those out safely. She found a, a biological dentist who could do that for her. 
But in the process, we also wanted to support her body so that she would handle that process of getting them removed. So we added things like glutathione, like you said, talked about that, you know, the sticky molecule. It's a master detoxifier in the body and um, is really necessary for the body to remove toxins and heavy metals. We, we really made sure her diet was rich in fiber because that's important. We made sure her diet was rich in those cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale that helps the body produce glutathione. Um, we gave her some NAC, N-acetylcysteine, which is a precursor to glutathione. We made sure she was getting enough protein in her diet because protein is really important for detoxification. Um, and, uh, and then she... You know, she slowly had her amalgams replaced. She did, I think it was three different sessions she went in for. Um, and before and after each session, we, we gave her even a little more support uh, through some of her supplements. And, um, and then for a while afterwards, we put her on a whole protocol that includes a binder, you know, to help with binding the toxins, uh, uh, liposomal glutathione, which is a glutathione that comes through the through the skin, through the oral mucosa, through the mouth, um, and different different nutrients to support that detoxification process. And and she did that for for three to six months. And when we re we rechecked her, her mercury levels were much lower. And the great thing is that she. Um, really started to feel better in terms of her immune system. She didn't get sick as much. You know, she um, she didn't get every cold and flu around. She was kind of amazed at how well her immune system was working. And, you know, this I just spoke to her recently. So she was thrilled because, you know, with COVID going around, she, she, was, she was feeling so much more comfortable with how well her immune system was working. She felt like she had a really good control over not getting every single virus going around. That's so great. So, so basically what you describe is, is identifying a high level of metals that are coming from her filling. She got them safely removed. And then you went through a very methodical process of, of supporting her body's own detox system. And, you know, one of the things we do is use food as medicine. And, and you know, people don't understand how powerful food is in helping detoxification. Uh, and personally, when I go to the grocery store, I'm looking for drugs. <laughs> I'm looking for the drugs in food that help upregulate the pathways in my own body that I know I need to boost detoxification. In the next case, we're going to talk about some of the genetics involved in impaired detoxification. But for me, I have really crappy detox genes. So I'm not great at making glutathione. So I always make sure I eat plenty of cruciferous vegetables every day two three cups of broccoli collards kale brussels sprouts kohlrabi whatever i can get my hands on i make sure that's a staple of my diet and i also make sure that i'm eating things like garlic and onions i'm using things like artichoke hearts and artichokes which are great detoxifiers and many other phytochemicals uh, rosemary lime lemon peel and many, many things we use every day to help us boost our own pathways. But, you know, in a very sophisticated way in functional medicine, we understand how to how to turn on all the the super highways of detoxification using food, using amino acids, which are from protein. And you didn't mention this, but protein is super important for detoxification because a lot of the pathways involve amino acids. Also need the right B vitamins to methylate and get rid of the metals. We also need certain nutrients like selenium and zinc to help us boost our detox system. And of course, what you mentioned also is very important is not just taking all these things to rev up the detox process, but also to make sure we're getting rid of it, which means we need binders in the gut, things like silica or alginates and other binders, pectins, which can help to bind the metals so you don't reabsorb them and you you, don't, you get rid of them from your body. And what happens is just striking. I, I'm just going to kind of quickly do a few uh, stories and then and I want to hear about this last case. But and I've seen not only myself, but I've seen patients, for example, with autoimmune diseases like ulcerative colitis that I tried all my normal tricks on in functional medicine. Nothing worked. We got rid of the metals. They got better. Crohn's disease. I've seen people with heart failure, reverse their heart failure, getting rid of heavy metals. I've seen people who have dementia, and you're going to talk about that, uh, and memory issues are getting better. I've seen kids with autism improve. I've seen you know, people lose weight in ways they couldn't lose weight. I've seen depression go away, insomnia, chronic fatigue. I mean, all these problems which are really difficult to treat using traditional medicine often become quite simple when you actually identify the root cause. And that's what functional medicine is about. It's looking at the root causes it's getting rid of the, the things that are causing the problem, like metals in this case, and providing all the things the body needs to function better. And that's why we call it functional medicine, because it's about how do you get to optimal function. And, and I, I just I love the next case because 
you know, we're seeing a, a basically a, an epidemic of of dementia. You know, we have uh, five million people now. Soon be fourteen million. There's so many with memory loss. You know, by the time you're eighty five, you have a fifty percent chance of having dementia. Uh, it's 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 a real problem, and it's costing more than any other disease because of all the caregiving and disability. When you look at sort of the end to end costs, it's more expensive than cancer or heart disease, uh, and it's getting worse and worse and worse because we're living in a uh, a society that is full of what I call dementogens, <laughs> which is not only the metals, but it's also our diet, it's stress, it's lack of sleep, it's our gut microbiome damage. It's the environmental toxins and so forth that we've chatted about. So I think, I think, you know, for me, heavy metal screening is, is just about as important as checking your blood pressure or your blood sugar or your cholesterol. And, and it should be standard of practice. And I still don't quite know why it's not. People understand in medicine, lead may be an issue, although they don't really treat it. But mercury is just this blind spot. And, uh, if anybody's listening and they want to fund a study where you could just take a thousand people, track track them and do challenge tests on them and see what the levels are in the background population. No one's really done that. And then see how that correlates with various illnesses and issues. But it's really, this is really a, a, sort of this big black hole in medicine that if we, we actually were able to uh, share what we know in functional medicine with a greater medical community and they were to listen, we would really be able to turn around so many people with difficult to treat chronic illnesses. Yeah. And like you mentioned, you know, how our genetics are, if we have some variations or some SNPs in our genetics that can impact how much these heavy metals are impacting our health. And so for this person, he was missing one of the glutathione producing genes, it was GSTM1 absent, which is, you know, is, is very common, but can definitely impact how well somebody can produce glutathione and detoxify. He also had a variation in his APOE gene, which it's he was a 3-4, which we know increases his risk for memory loss and dementia. But we know one of the reasons it might be doing that is because people with that genetic variation don't handle heavy metals as well. And so that's a kind of an interesting thing. So we'll look at these. That's me. <laughs> tips. Yeah. Yeah. I think so you we'll too, right? Um, I am I am also missing the glutathione gene. My APOE is okay, but my yeah. glutathione gene's not so good. Yeah. So this guy, this gentleman who came to see me, he was 65, and he was concerned about his memory. He had a pretty intense, high power job. He worked in New York City. He was very successful, and you know was a, you know working very hard, but wanted to be able to continue to work hard and work well. And he was noticing that his memory was not as good as it used to be. And his mom had some dementia in her seventies, and his mom's dad, so his his maternal grandfather, uh, had some memory loss too as he got older. So you know he he wanted to be as proactive as possible. He was somebody who who made really good food choices most of the time. You know, he was trying to eat healthy. He was exercising most days. He didn't sleep enough. Like he was he was definitely working a little too much. But he wanted to do as much as he could to stay to stay healthy. And so, as I said, we do a really good detailed history and in terms of environmental history when people come in to see us. And, you know, we noticed that one of the things he wasn't doing so well is he was he was picking up sushi often for lunch and um, he loved tuna sushi, you know, sushi was made of tuna. And so he did it very often, you know, many, many days at lunchtime, you know, mm -hmm. thinking it was a good, healthy choice. But it made me concerned that maybe we should be looking at his mercury levels. He had, yeah, I mean, had yeah, sushi would be fine and tuna would be fine if it wasn't for us damn humans that have put all I the know. coal in the atmosphere, which has gone into the oceans and, and is taken up by the algae and then is eaten by the little fish who then are eaten by the bigger fish and so on until we're at the top of the food chain and it is a bad news situation. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. We can't be blaming that tuna. We gotta be blaming <laughs> ourselves here, right? <laughs> Um, and he had his amalgams replaced. So he had them replaced a few years ago um, because he just didn't like the silver fillings in his mouth. And he had them put he had composite put in. But he wasn't really sure if it was done safely or, you know, he, he didn't really wasn't really paying attention at the time. So so for him, we chose to do a provoked heavy metal challenge test. And that test we spoke about where you take a chelator and collect urine. And we 
um, his mercury level was about 110. And, um, and as you mentioned, there's no good level, but that was definitely concerning to me, it made me say, you know what, we've got to work to bring this down. Um, this is too high. And um, his blood level, you know, we'll say, you know, I definitely see higher blood levels when people live in urban areas. So I think his blood level was a little bit high too, um, probably from re maybe recent uh, tuna intake, but also mm -hmm. just living in New York City, we see some higher yeah. levels unfortunately. Um, so we started him on, you know, we started him on a medical food, which is a food, which it's a powder that has amino acids, like you mentioned, the building blocks of protein, which are necessary for the body to detoxify. It also had a bunch of minerals in it, including selenium, which is necessary for the body to make glutathione and molybdenum and zinc and just a really good, you know, really nutrient rich medical food. Um, I also put him on, it had some milk thistle in it, which supports the, the liver and helps with detoxification. And um, so we, we really cleaned up his diet. We gave him some, some greens, a green powder also. So of course we want people to be getting all of these phytonutrients from their plant foods, but, but he needed a little extra support. So we gave him a greens powder and some sulforaphane, which is the component that's in cruciferous vegetables that helps the glutathione um, work so much better. Um, so we did a bunch of things just to support his body. And then we started him on a, on a detoxification chelation type of a, of a procedure where, where we did it orally, but every, you know, three days out of every two weeks, we gave him some DMSA to, um, to uh, help pull the heavy metals out of his body. But as, as we've mentioned earlier, it's really important that, you know, we support the body, get the body ready to do this whole process. So that was one of the things we really, we really focused on. I think that's so key. And I think we have to understand that uh, there is a science to detoxification. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna detox and go through a cleanse. This is really a very sophisticated medical process that uses food and exercise and saunas that uses tons of fiber and binders to bind the metals to, and that sophistic, in a sophisticated way knows how to upregulate all the pathways and the highways to get rid of junk in your body. And it requires the amino acids, it requires minerals like zinc and selenium, it requires all the B vitamins like B12 folate and B6, it requires the supplements that can help boost glutathione like N-acetylcysteine, like poic acid, and, and others and it requires, it requires eating a lot of foods that have detoxifying properties and when you put all that together you can really profoundly impact the body's load of metals uh, and on top of that sometimes you do need a chelator like dmsa which is a drug it's an fda approved drug to prove for lead chelation in kids when who are very sick but it also works against other heavy metals so we often combine that with with these other practices and it's very powerful and one of the things you mentioned about this guy i don't want to skip over is this apoe34 gene in the gstm1 gene apoe is a gene that affects lipid metabolism and many other things but it, it the apoe4 variant of this gene is highly correlated with alzheimer's so if you have two four variants like in other words if you are one from your mom and one from your dad, you uh, have about a 75% risk of getting Alzheimer's. Uh, it's not inevitable. And we've had patients who have a double four who don't get it because they really focus on their lifestyle and cleaning up everything and, and you can prevent it, but it makes you much more likely. And, you, and what's interesting is that the ApoE4 protein that's made from that gene doesn't have the amino acid cysteine on the chain. And cysteine is one of these really important amino acids that is the building block for glutathione. It's a sulfur containing amino acids. So these people just cannot clear the metals. And when you, there was a study I think it was done in uh, Australia where they took people with ApoE4 and they did challenge tests like we're talking about. And they found that those who had ApoE4 had way higher levels of mercury. So it's, it's another way to think about it. In the glutathione gene we talked about, I had an absent level. So, uh, you know, and what happened to this guy is he got better, right? What happened to his memory? I mean, we, we did a whole, we did a process. We did this whole protocol for... Um, three months and then rechecked him and his levels were cut in half. They were around 54. And then another, we did, we continued, we, we, we continued another three months and then they went down to 10. And then we did, you know, we, we pulled away the chelator, but continued more detoxification support for him. But what he really noticed was just feeling better. You know, his energy was better. His focus was better. His memory was better. 
And, you know, he was thankful because he feels like this is going to really help him do well in the way into his eighties and nineties in terms of his, his overall health, his, and his, uh, his cognition. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's one of those uncharted territories in medicine. And I, it just breaks my heart because I see so many people suffer needlessly from this. And, and sadly, if you go to your traditional doctor, they're not going to know what to test. They're not going to do the QS tri test. They're not going to do a urine challenge test where you take a pill and get your urine for six hours and see what your load is. They're not going to know what to do to tell you to get rid of the mercury from your body except stop eating sushi. They probably won't tell you to get your fillings out because the American Dental Association says it's not an issue, even though the government now the FDA has said, yeah, it is kind of an issue. Uh, and, and I think, it, you know, if you have any kind of chronic ailment, it's it definitely part of a screening evaluation. And you really need to see a functional medicine doctor, someone who's really trained and experienced in this. And you don't want to be messing around with it if you don't know what you're doing, because you can hurt people. Uh, I've written a lot about this. I have a couple of blogs on drhyman.com that are going to great detail about how to detoxify, how to identify things. I wrote them years ago, but they're still pretty current. Uh, if you go, you know, just type in mercury in the search engine on my, on my website, drhyman.com, you'll find the articles. It's a lot of background there. We'll put them in the show notes. But I, I think this is such an important area, Liz. And I think, you know, at the Ultra Wellness Center, this is what we do. We, we, we are medical detectives. We look for all the factors that may be driving a disease. And the truth is, you know, it's so, it's so we call it pleomorphic. In other words, it's, it, it can show up in so many different ways. You know, one person it might cause memory issues. Another person might cause an autoimmune issue. Another person it might cause digestive issues. Another person it might cause allergies or... Uh, you know, depression or obesity or, you know, it's like, so you, how do you know what's causing what? So that's what functional medicine is. It's, it's really a, a method of finding the root cause uh, using both medical history, which we learned, but also looking at a, we do a very detailed environmental history. Most doctors don't do an environmental history. We do, we want to know everything. And I, you know, you'd be surprised sometimes, like what you, what you find by listening to people. Oh yeah. Well, you know, one woman, she, she had Parkinson's at 50 years old and turned out she had, had grew up in the Bronx and had cockroaches and rats running all over her. And when she moved to Long Island to get out of the city, when she was older, she was a total, um, fanatic about spraying her house for cockroaches and rats inside and outside every month with a chemical called chloridine, which is now banned. It's a pesticide. And she got Parkinson's from that. But unless you dig in and figure it out, and then we had to detoxify her. So I, I think it's really important to understand that, that, you know, these are prevalent problems, that heavy metals and environmental toxins do cause disease. Doctors are poorly trained in that, as they are in nutrition. And that if you really want to get help from a problem that you think is is just hanging on, whether it's everything from MS to, you know, a digestive issues, headache, whatever it is, you've got to know how to think through these problems. And this is really what functional medicine is all about. At the Ultra Wellness Center, we've been doing this for decades. Uh, and it's so exciting to see, like, the cases you shared where someone was getting sick all the time, someone who was having early dementia, that you can reverse these problems if you identify what the issues are. It's pretty exciting. So any last thoughts about mercury, Liz, and, and, and what we should be thinking about that? Because, by the way, this applies to all heavy metals like arsenic, lead, cadmium. We see a lot of that. But mercury is probably the worst. Yeah. You know, I mean, I just want to thank you, Mark, because this is an area, like you said, you've written about for years and years and you've been talking about for years. And, you know, when you really encouraged me to move forward and get my amalgams replaced and support my detoxification system, it made a world of dis difference for my health too. You know, my immune system got so much better. My, my um, cognition got better. I was, I was, you know, uh, able to focus more during the day and didn't get as tired, but definitely I didn't get as sick as often. So, yeah. you know, I, I really appreciate um, everything that you've helped me learn over the years in this area, because it's, and, and with, with not just for myself, but my patients, it is that yeah. area where you're like, okay, this person's not getting better. Why are they not getting better? I've got to di di dig deeper in terms of their detox system. And it's, it's always the area where we're like, Oh, that's why, you know, yeah. we've got to really support that area. So thank you. Yeah, it's true. And, I, you know, it just comes up in all kinds of ways. I, I remember uh, a group of people I've been treating who are special forces soldiers. And these guys, you know, are the toughest of the tough. I mean, you know, they like tread water in 30 degree weather for like three hours and <laughs> tread your water for three hours. I mean, these, these guys, you know, do 4,000 push-ups. I mean, these guys are no pushover. Um, I mean, I'm exaggerating, obviously. But, <laughs> but they are they are supermen. And, and a whole bunch of them were getting really sick. And 
the military are like, oh, they're just, you know, complainers, they just this, and sort of dismiss them. And uh, one of the key leaders was an army ranger who was a blast expert, and he, you know, their job was to blow stuff up. So they would go in these blast houses and train other soldiers how to blow stuff up. And they would ex run explosive and shoot guns. And these guys' levels of metals were off the chart, mercury and lead. And, and no one had identified it within the military. And we were able to start to treat these patients, chelate them, fix their immune systems, fix their neurologic systems. And these guys who, quote, had chronic fatigue and were dysfunctional, have, having to go on disability. I mean, these are, these are special forces soldiers. They got better. And even the New York Times wrote an article about how, uh, how they were treated and they got better and how scientists at uh, Mount Sinai in, in New York, which are lead experts, said, well, they've never seen anything like this. They've never seen measuring lead in the bone before and after and seeing it come down because it just doesn't do that. Well, yeah, it does if you know what to do. And that's really the whole point of functional medicine is really getting people to the answers they need, learning how to navigate this landscape of disease in the 21st century using 21st century medicine, which is functional medicine, and helping people where, where really other approaches really don't work. So I, I'm just uh, so happy to be able to be practicing functional medicine. It's been the greatest blessing of my life. And to be able to do it with you, Liz, and our colleagues at the Ultra Wellness Center, is just, it's just so fantastic. And, you know, it's so gratifying because people actually get better. It's not like we were trained in regular medical school. You have to manage the diseases and people just don't actually get better. Me too, Mark. And, and I'm so grateful to be with you today. So thank you for having me. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening to this week's house call. If you've enjoyed this little episode of The Doctor's Pharmacy, please share with your friends and family. Uh, subscribe every year to your podcast. Leave a comment. We'd love to know if you've had heavy metals, what you've done, how it's worked, what's happened to you. And share us with us your insights. And we'll see you next week on The Doctor's Pharmacy.